Have you ever left in the middle of a date? If so, why? Story one, blind date, Indian restaurant. First thing he does is produce a folder of photos of him and various celebrities. Shows me them one by one, he keeps clutching at me. After about 15 minutes of this, I say, this isn't really. I don't think we're compatible. I think I should go and get up to leave. He stood up too and shouted at me as I left. No, I did not look back. Ed, this happened in the mid-1980s. So unless the guy you're thinking of is now in his 70s, it's not him. Yes, a real manila folder with 8x10 glossies and a real manila and envelope. Mid-1980s, no Photoshop, no iPhone. The two celebs I remember seeing are Jimmy Carter and the Dalai Lama. Remember, this was 30 years ago. No, I don't remember what he was shouting. I was focused on GTFO of there, and as I said 30 years ago. No, I don't remember which Indian restaurant, but it was in Cambridge, M.A. Yellow Walls. Yes, he was a Harvard man. No, he was not blind. A blind date is when somebody fixes you up with somebody you don't know, or when you go out with somebody you've met via a dating service or ad. No photos back then, just descriptions. Also, I am so glad this entertained you all. My operating principle, Ari, nightmare experiences is, this is God's way of giving us drinking stories. You've proved me right. Story two. I was in my late teens and went on a date with a friend of a friend. He seemed nice, and I got the okay from my BFF, so I anticipated a pleasant, quiet evening. We were just going for frozen yogurt and TV at his house, after all. Well, everything's going smooth, and he seems really sweet. He tells me he likes to write poetry, and my teenage girl brain is thinking, Wow! A sensitive guy. How refreshing. Then he tells me that he wants to show me something. I assumed it was a poem he wrote because we had just talked about it. Me. Okay. What is it? Him. Well, it's not ready yet, but it will be in a couple minutes. As he leans over on his side, away from me, Emmy. Confused because I'm expecting a poem. Is he going to write a poem in a couple minutes? This is going to be awkward. Then he starts making all these innuendos about what it is. I get annoyed because he sounds like he's describing his banana, and the joke is dying fast. Finally, just to shut him up, I say, if it's your banana, then no, I don't want to see it. Him. Oh. Okay, then. And he sits back normally on the couch. I'm super confused and think he's pulling my leg. I ask if he's kidding and says no. He seriously wanted to whip out his junk and show me. Me. What the asterisk hell asterisk am I supposed to say to you while your banana is out? Him. Well, my last girlfriend told me she'd been waiting to see it all night. Me. Stunned silence. Then. Okay. Being the awkward teen I was, I sat back into the couch not touching him. We had been cuddling up until that conversation and uncomfortably waited out the remainder of whatever show was on TV, and then bolted. After I got home, I called my BFF and frantically told her what had happened. Her response? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. He likes to do that. Edit. Formatting. I'm no good at this. Story three. Occupied date. Emailed back and forth, had some common interests. Seemed like we would get along. We met up and got food, a couple drinks, seemed to be getting along well. Then he starts talking about how good he is at karaoke. He's been in contests and won first place. He and his friends go all the time, etc. I tell him I've only done karaoke a few times when very drunk and with a big group of friends. I also mention that I'm pretty sure I'm tone deaf. He tells me there is a karaoke place only one block away. I tell him I'm not interested. He tells me you get your own little booth. No one else will even hear you. You can pick whatever songs you want. No waiting while other people sing. It's clear he's not giving up, so I grab two shots of vodka and say, fine, I'll try it. We go to the karaoke lounge and get our booth, and he does three or four songs perfectly. I start my first song, and he starts criticizing me and pointing out what I'm doing wrong while I'm trying to sing. Then he picks up the other mic and starts singing over me. I say fudge this and just get up to leave. He chases after me and tells me, I need you to pay for half of this. It's $60. I look in my wallet, take out the only cash I had, and said, Here's $20, and you can go fudge yourself. Then he follows me to the bus stop and tried to make idle chit-chat while I wait to get the fudge away from him. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Story four. Had joined a new sports club, and there was one guy who was quiet and kind of just hung around the periphery of the group. I felt kind of bad for him, so was always trying to bring him into conversations and talk to him. One night, we all went out for drinks after the game, and I talked to him for a while. Conversation was hard work, but he seemed like a nice guy. He texted and asked me if I wanted to go out for coffee. I wasn't really interested, but knew, given how quiet he was, that it probably took a ton of nerve to text me that. And I thought maybe in a one, one environment, he would be more comfortable, and I could get to know him a little more. We met at the coffee shop, and he had a big backpack with him. 
We ordered drinks, then chatted, with me again doing most of the talking. He rarely initiated, but would answer questions. About one half hour in, he said he had a few things to show me to let me get to know him better. He then did a show and tell from his backpack, pulling out various items and pictures and telling me about them. Some were kind of interesting, a family trip, and some I had no idea how to respond to. Here is a picture of how I had my hair cut in grade eight. He had stuffed animals and lots of items from his childhood. I kept trying to bring the conversation to the present to find out if the item linked to a current interest or hobby, but he kind of had the story about each item rehearsed, and he would go right back to the show and tell. Eventually, the table was full of stuff, and I tried to politely say that I had seen enough and changed the topic. He told me had still had more to show me. I ended up saying I felt sick and left. I felt kind of bad, but it was just getting too weird. Story five, I left in the middle of a movie once. The date was going great, but I forgot that I had left a candy pie in the oven in my apartment. Only broke college guys and old people eat candy pies. I remembered a few minutes in and whispered something along the lines of gotta get my candy pie out of the oven so I don't burn down my apartment, I'll be right back. I did return, but she was pissed. Thought we could go see the candy pie and have a laugh. Arrived at my previously empty apartment to find my brother and the neighbor girls drunk and in my living room. Showed her the candy pie and she said something along the lines of, You're an unpleasant person, take me home. Story six. I've had a girl walk out on me, took me weeks to realize why. This was date three. We'd met initially at a nightclub randomly, kinda just said hi and our groups merged, the boys and her girls. Met up a week later at a carnival and ha a great time. This day in particular, we met up for a basic lunch at a nice little spot near my place and just had nothing to talk about, which was odd. She seemed semi-vacant. Lunch goes by with small talk. We pay separately and she asks to come back to my place. No problems there. She's an attractive girl and I have a banana. Anyhow, we get back to my place. She throws on a DVD while I snack up the coffee table and we start talking about pet peeves with the opposite close relationship. Usual things come up first, like toilet seat positioning and get-ready time for outings. Somehow it leads on to a story about this girl I knew who was dating me whilst having an actual boyfriend on the side, and how disrespectful it was in the end. She just goes pale white, grabs her stuff, and makes some excuse about forgetting something at home. I thought I'd maybe sounded a bit cocky, or come across like a douchebag. Kind of felt like in peach for a day or so and moved on. My housemate ran into her and her boyfriend shopping a week later. That was awkward. Story 7. We had been on a couple of dates, and he invited me to his house to watch a movie. I showed up, and he immediately brings me an ice pick. I don't like vodka, and I wasn't in the mood to drink, but I thanked him for the drink, and I sipped on it a little. He commented that I wasn't drinking fast enough. I said, oh, well, I'm not really in the drinking mood. He kept pressuring me to drink. I inspected my glass to make sure there was no residue or anything else in it. There wasn't but when I finished, he made me another without asking. I thanked him, but said that I really didn't want another. He told me not be rude and that I should have drinks with him if he's making them for me. When I finished that one, I said, I really don't want another. He brings me another. It's obvious that he's trying to get me drunk. He keeps trying to make out with me, and I said that I really wanted to watch the movie. He keeps, literally, pulling my face towards him and shoving his tongue down my throat. I turned the other way on the couch, so I had my feet down by him and he couldn't get to my face. He then gets on the floor and walks on his mother knees to my face and starts trying to kiss me again. I said I needed to go to the bathroom. I quietly called my best friend and told her I need her to call me back with something urgent in a couple of minutes so I could get out of a bad date. She did, and I took off. After that, they kept trying to call and text me a lot, and I just told him, Look, you were obviously trying to get me drunk and kept forcing kisses after I said I wanted to watch the movie. This is not going to work out. Story 8. This was a third date. He was a nice enough guy, an editor at the local newspaper. We we're at his house, and he's made me dinner, and suddenly he drops in normal conversation that his fetish is having close relationship with girls that are unconscious. I immediately stopped eating, stopped drinking, and made my exit. I did not get roofied, but oh no, was I scared that it was in the cards for that night. Edit. His exact words were, You're so alluring. I'd love to share something with you since we seem to be hitting it off. Yada, yada, yada. I excused myself to the bathroom and pretended to get an emergency call. He got arrested two years later for being a peeping Tom, then moved away. I swear this happened. I met some real weirdos when I was doing the OK Cupid thing. For instance, met a guy that said a Black Panther was his spirit animal and that she came to him in his dreams. Sometimes she told him to do bad things to people, but she was OK with me. That one never got a second date. 
but I saw his engagement notice in the paper a year later. Story 9. So this is about ten years ago. A few friends in another city introduce me and this girl. We call each other, chat on instant messenger, and text a bit. I tell I'm going to see my friends in a couple weeks, and we set up a dinner date. We met at the restaurant, big hug and huge grin from her. We sit down, chat, and are talking a bit when two of her friends get seated diagonally from us. She gets up to go say hi, never introduces me, and proceeds to have the waiter drop her food off at their table. Her friends ask why she's leaving me alone, and without any shame, she says he's fine. Waiter comes to pick up my plate. I'd already ordered, and I didn't want to be a banana and screw the waiter, and drops off my check, then hands her her own check. I just shrugged it off, handed the guy a $20, saying keep the change, and left. She calls me on my way back to my buddy's house, complainers me out, then had the balls to ask if I'd buy her alcohol to take to a party. I was 21, she was 19. I laughed. She called me a banana and hung up. Then I questioned why I answered the call in the first place. Edit, close my parenthesis. Story 10. Met a guy online who lived about an hour away. We agreed to meet up closer to me, and he told me he was just going to stay in town that night. I figured he had friends here or whatever. He gets to the date, and he is clearly about 15 years older than his pictures represented. I figured I would finish the meal, then GTFO. After dinner, he insisted on walking me to my car and then said, Okay, so I'll just follow you back to your place then. I was quite shocked and a little scared for my safety, so I said, Okay, and then ripped out of that parking lot before he could get to his car. He texted me an hour later and told me he was home LOL. Never heard from him after that. Story 11. It was an O Cupid date and we met for coffee after talking a while. He had a sour look on his face when I got there, so I wasn't expecting too much. When our coffee came out, he said, I'm glad you didn't ask me to pay for that because I don't think you should be drinking something with that many calories. I'm a fat person. But he was asterisk, way asterisk, fatter than me. So I thought he was being self-deprecating. I was prepared to roll my eyes and let it go. But then he ranted for about 15 minutes about how women were getting too fat and how they should be pressured to lose more weight. Eventually, I stopped him with a, You saw my picture. Why did you even agree to coffee? His answer was, I was hoping you had lost weight since the picture was taken because no one would put themselves on a dating app in that condition. Story 12. He turned up drunk and brought pictures of his time in Iraq in the army with him that he took me through painfully slowly one by one. I politely excused myself to go for a cane, and he lost it, accused me of being rude, shouting about how no wonder I was single, and then sat on my coat so I couldn't run away, saying that even if I did leave, he would follow me and make me sorry. He also goes on a rant about how all graduates are entitled dickheads. He doesn't agree with women going to uni, and that I'm a middle-class CNT. He had insisted on paying for my drink, so when I came back in, I said I wanted to go, and he insisted that I owe him a drink, because he was going up Camden to meet his mates and didn't want to be behind on the drinks front. Fine, whatever, he's clearly insane. I'll just buy him one to shut him up, then I can leave. At the bar, he begins throwing ice at the barmaid when her back is turned. Then when she turns around accusingly, points at me and says, she did it. The barmaid and I both know that it was him. After he has his pint in his hand, he goes back to the table, and I confess to said barmaid that I'm on the worst date of my life and want to run away. She pours me a shot of tequila, tells the bouncer to distract him, then helped me run away. As he banged on the window and shouted, I'll find you, ran home sobbing like a lunatic. Story 13. I took a girl once to my favorite Mexican restaurant. She proceeded to pretty much give me a rundown of her past five boyfriends, why the relationship failed, how each was in bed, what they all did for a living, where they all took her for vacations. My eyes started to cross and my blood was starting to boil. I was relegated to un and, wow, that guy is an unpleasant person responses. She seemed very disinterested in anything I had to say, and I was flipping done. As I was about to get up and walk out, the waiter brought my fajitas. So you know what? I just rolled with it. Started asking questions about her ex-boyfriends. All the while I was stuffing my face with tasty, tasty fajitas. Honestly, most of the dudes sounded like pretty good guys, but I put on a brave face and cow talked them in between bites. Once I was full, I got up, said I needed to go to the bathroom, paid for my half of the meal at the register, and just left. She was busy texting someone and didn't even notice. On my way home, she texted me and asked me where I was. Told her that I left, and that maybe she should ask one of her ex-boyfriends to come and pick her up since she spent the last 45 minutes doing nothing but talking about them. Got a couple fudge use, you're an unpleasant person, texts on the drive home, but it's been radio silent ever since.
Story 14. Met a guy in the mall I worked at. He was cute and shy. After a week of flirting, he asked for my number. I was so stoked. We got to texting, and it turns out we were neighbors. He asked me to go for a walk that night, and I happily said yes. He gave me a creepy vibe within a few minutes of the date starting, so I started planning my out. I told him I had a late-night yoga class, and I had to get home. On the walk to my place, he asked if I wanted to see pictures on his phone. I agreed, thinking that they were going to be pictures of his dog or something. Nope, pictures of girls from the internet. Luckily, we made it to my apartment building, and he asked to hug me. I basically ran in the door, and as soon as I was safe inside, I messaged him I wasn't interested in him. He stalked me for months, upwards of 70 texts a day. It took friends showing up and threatening him. Edit. I forgot that he had to talk in a whisper to control his severe stutter. I have a very minor one, so it wasn't a total deal breaker. But looking back on it, totally creepy. Story 15. On a date with this girl from the local college. Things are going all right at first. She's looking for something purely physical, to which I had no objections, so she suggests we go back to her place. The apartment is kind of a cow hole, sparsely furnished. Her burnout roommate is rolling a blunt on the coffee table in their dimly lit living room by himself, empty 40 bottles all over. Still, no objections. I can get down with some grimy punk rock cow to an extent. So we go to her room and start making out. She puts on some music. We begin taking our clothes off. Just when things are getting really hot, she excuses herself to the bathroom. She's gone a while, maybe five minutes, so now I'm getting bored. I get up, start checking out the books on the shelf. Then I step on something and it sticks to my foot. I pick it off. It's a little two inches square of tin foil, all burnt on one side. Then I notice the used up tea candles in the trash and the spoon, Q-tips, and steel wool on the desk. It's not subtle, this chick is a junkie. I'm still waiting for her to get back from the can so I can politely excuse myself. When it occurs to me she's taking so long she's probably passed out. I go knock on the door, no reply. Knock again. What the fuck? I'm, I'm almost done. I know what you're doing in there. Yeah? So what? You can't judge me. You're making it pretty easy to judge you, actually. Oh, go fudge yourself. Great idea. Enjoy your candy. I can hear her scrambling to put her kid away and clean her cow up, but there's really nothing left to be said. I go back to the bedroom, put my shoes on, and casually leave through the window so I won't have to say anything to her creepy roommate. She starts blowing up my phone almost immediately. Where are you? What scent are you on? Come back, let's talk. It's NBD. I'll pick you up. She had given me a ride there and was now driving around looking for me. Thankfully, a close friend of mine lived on that same block, and he was home. So I just walked in Kramer style and explained the situation. Hi, dude. Sorry to bother you. My date's on a bunch of dope and is following me around trying to convince me to give her the D. Can I hang out here for a half hour? Never heard from her again. Friend gave me a beer. Edit. Holy cow, gold. It's my first time. I'll never forget you. Story 16. I have done it once. We arranged to meet at a bookstore because that is where I am most comfortable meeting people. When he arrived, he looked nothing like his photo and stood way too close. So close that I couldn't even think of a situation where standing that close to someone is ever acceptable. I decide to walk around, and hopefully my walking around would put some distance, but nope. Somehow this guy was able to stay glued to me the entire time. Every question I asked was replied with an I don't know. Finally, I said I was feeling really uncomfortable and was going to go home. I turned to leave, and I feel his hand go from my shoulder down my back to my hip. It made me cringe so bad. I noped out fast. Story 17. Yes, we met at a nicer restaurant, sat down, and had a decent conversation. We started to look over the menu and the wine list. I asked if she had a preference regarding the wine. She said no. I ordered a bottle of Pinot Grigio, since I didn't know her preferences or what she might order. Kind of a nice middle-of-the-road selection. When it came, the waitress brought two glasses, did the usual tasting, and when she went to pour my date a glass, she quickly declined. The waitress poured me a glass and left. I asked her if she'd prefer another drink. She launched into what I can only describe as a temperance lecture. She was stridently anti-alcohol, and my ordering wine had clearly upset her. This was a first date, so I had no way of knowing any of this, and had she let me know her thoughts ahead of time, say, when I asked her preference or when I was ordering, I'd have gotten something acceptable to her. Instead, I was getting a lecture that would not stop. I got called a drunk and rude and insensitive repeatedly by someone I just met in the course of about five minutes. After a few minutes, the waitress came over and asked if everything was okay. I told her no told my date that our date was over, and asked the waitress if I could be reseated at the bar. The waitress and my date both looked shocked. 
My date picked up her sweater and purse and stalked out. I picked up my glass. The waitress picked up the bottle and led me to the bar. In the bar, I met a very nice young lady with different ideas, and we shared the bottle in a very nice evening. Story 18. I'm late to the party, but my story involves a circus girl I met over Tinder, of course. She had a very interesting profile about her being an aerial acrobatic for a circus that toured all over America, so I swiped right for her. Plus, she was super cute. She messaged me on April 1st saying she had a show that night and wanted me to come see it. I had reservations about trusting a stranger I just met online on April Fool's Day, but I went away. But it turns out she was telling the truth. I arrive at the venue, and I immediately notice it is much smaller than I anticipated. There was no way she was going to be performing aerial acrobatics on a stage with a ceiling only 20 feet tall. I go to buy my ticket, and I find that my date is the one selling them. This is a perfect time to introduce myself, so I do, but she doesn't give any hint of recognition that I'm the guy she has been messaging over Tinder. The line to the window was long, so I didn't press the issue. The plan was to meet up for drinks after the show, so I just shook it off, took a seat, and just planned on approaching her after the performance. The circus was a disaster. The host started off the night by making the most inappropriate racist jokes I've never even heard from my close friends' mouths. There is a time and place for jokes like that, and I consider myself very open to a wide variety of humor. But when a large group of strangers are furtively looking around to see if anybody is laughing or offended, then things get awkward fast. His crew was talking loudly and making noise in the back room, and he had to talk over them most of the night. Overall, he did not ooze professionalism. He was a contortionist and a sword swallower, and was honestly the only saving grace and circus why part of the show. My date's bit was up second. She didn't do her usual aerial act, but instead did a dot 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 performance dot 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 involving a chair and a cream pie. It was nothing special whatsoever, and even the audience could barely applaud in the appropriate pauses meant for applauding. Her following performer, however, is the one that made me leave during intermission. He was a performance artist who walked up to the mic and started reciting a poem. Cool, I thought. It was actually a pretty neat poem, right until he took his pants and underwear off in the middle of reciting it. Fortunately for the audience, he had his banana tucked in between his legs, so it wasn't full frontal nudity per se, but still slightly disturbing nonetheless. He continued the deep, serious poem without any mention of his debriefing, and finished his poem by exclaiming, Hail Satan! and turned around and taking a bow, simultaneously presenting to the audience the good old banana and balls he had been shyly hiding, along with the consolation prize of his unpleasant person. I had never noped so hard in my life. I didn't even talk to her before I left, and unmatched her the next day. She sent me a message the following morning thanking me for coming, so she obviously recognized me but was just using Tinder as a way of advertising and getting guys to pay for her poor circus show. Story 19. Blind date. My friend's boyfriend's roommate. My friend told me he'd seen me when we had stopped by their house. I didn't remember seeing him, but she insisted that he was a real sweetie, and this was exactly what I needed. Just gotten divorced, had two kids, recently home from Iraq. Meet him at the restaurant, and he's the most attractive Middle Eastern man I have ever seen in my life. We started talking about his work, medical resident. I was a paramedic, so that was fun for me. And at first it seemed to be going really well. Then he asked about me. Obviously, Iraq came up. I'd only been home for six months, so it couldn't be avoided. Turns out he had really strong feelings about the war. Funny thing was, for the most part, I agreed with him. Trouble was, he jumped straight to the, you are a murdering racist. I've got a temper and I had PTSD, so my fuse was a asterisk touch asterisk shorter than usual. Thus ended my first date of divorced life. I ended up married to the next guy I went out with, so that's the only story I've got. But seriously. If you are fixing up a veteran on a blind date, at least clue in the other person about it, especially if that person has a valid reason for having very strong feelings about it. Like, you know, they are from the region that was invaded on questionable pretexts. Story 20. When I was in college, a girl I knew who had an interest in me asked me to go with her to a sorority pledge dinner event. She needed a date and didn't want to go alone, so I felt I was doing her a favor. But I didn't know anybody so would stay relatively close to my date in the event she wanted to introduce me or simply to act like a date staying somewhat close. After dinner, she went from one person to the next and was awkward because she wouldn't say anything and just walk off so I would follow. At one point with about three of her future sorority members around, she turned and said, Are you just going to follow me all night like a puppy dog? I looked at her and simply said, No, and walked away. I walked straight to the car and left. 
Don't know how she got home and didn't care. She went to where I worked the next day crying and told me how sorry and rude she was and wanted to go out again. I was nice to her, but going out on a second date was not going to happen. Story 21. He kept glaring at the bartender who was smiling at me while pouring my glass of wine. When I asked the bartender for a recommendation, the guy was not happy that the dude and I were talking. I went into the bathroom and had my friend call me in five minutes to pretend to be my roommate locked out of our apartment. Keep in mind that this was the first time we've met face to face and first date. He edit. No, everyone, the two men were not plotting to roofie me. The bartender was smiling at me, being polite, and could tell that the date was not going anywhere since all the dude could talk about was how life-changing a trip he went on three years previous was. Story 22. Met a woman on OkCupid, and after chatting back and forth for a few weeks, we decide to meet for coffee at a local Starbucks. When she shows up, she's much heavier and older than her pictures, and looking like she's coming off a two-week meth bender. I decide to play it out to see what happens. Conversation was pretty dull till she started talking about her job and how much she hates it, mainly because her bosses don't pay her a lot because I quote, the Jews. I immediately excuse myself to the bathroom and call a friend for the classic call in five minutes with an emergency. No response. Time to man mode it. I go back to the table, state I have to leave, grab my coat, say it was wonderful to meet her, and bolt. Thankfully, never heard from her again. Story 23. She was from a nuclear family with lots of money. In itself, not a bad thing. However, she proceeded to go on a rant about trashy people from divorced, remarried, and single-parent families, and how those people would never amount to anything, that sort of thing. She also mentioned how she could tell I was from a traditional family with wholesome values, not some loser raised by a slutty single mother or influenced by a runaway, deadbeat father, her words, because I was clearly raised right. At this point, I get up from the table, track down the waitstaff, and ask for separate checks. As she proceeds to call me an unpleasant person for not paying for her meal and acts confused about why, I tell her not to contact me again, but that I'll be sure to pass on to my single mother that people are noticing how well she raised me. Edit. So, I got gold. I don't know what it does or what I'm supposed to do with it. But if there's a way to pay it forward, I guess that'll do nicely. Thanks, anonymous benefactor. Edit again. So I got a second gold? I'm grateful, don't get me wrong, but it's not like I really did anything. Also, I'm sorry I can't respond to everyone. There are a lot of comments to which I'd love to respond, but... And I can't believe I'm about to say this. Other things take priority over Reddit, usually. Story 24. Great thread. Sad I'm a little late with mine. So, first date we were talking about TV shows we like, and she mentioned my big fat gypsy wedding, which I had also seen and liked. Then she said, I wish American men could be real men like gypsy men or okay. I don't think the traveler lifestyle is the healthiest on the planet. Lowest life expectancy in Europe, rampant illiteracy, domestic abuse, all the bad stuff. Plus the expectation to be married by 18 at the latest, so she was clearly unmarriable to a traveler even if she'd not been the wrong ethnicity for them. My family does a bunch of outreach in the traveler community. Helping them go to school, find housing if they want to settle, that kind of thing. So I'm more familiar with this lifestyle than someone who watched one TV show one time. So I tell her some of this. Then she says that I'm not a real man because I don't want to be a domineering patriarch, and that it's probably all because I was raised by a single mother, and therefore know nothing about what a man is supposed to be like. End of date. Story 25. Yes, first and last date. He picked me up at my place. Before we drove off, he told me he was apartment-sitting cat sitting for a friend couple of blocks away from my place, and he just needed to check on the cat before heading out for dinner. I said, sure, not a problem. So we go to this apartment, I stand in the doorway while he does his thing feeding the cat and whatnot. I just ask whose apartment is this, just making small talk. His response, it's my ex-girlfriend's of seven years. She's totally okay if we fudge on her bed. At that point, I just turn, open the door, and walk out of the apartment without saying a word. Never heard from him again. Story 26. I met a girl in a dating site. We went on a first meet type date at a Starbucks, which went pretty well. At the end, she mentioned that she had a bus to catch home, and I offered to drive her. She accepted, and I drove her home, but when we got close, she asked that I pull over a block away. She said she still lived with her ex due to a lease and not having the money to get her own place yet. Anyway, we kiss, and she gets out. A few days go by, and I get a call from her, and we go on a second date, this time to a bar. We flirt and play pool and are having a great time. After dancing a while, we take a sit-down and chat for a bit. 
It's at this point she makes a comment about how tough the job market is. This was in late 09 and that her friend really had it bad after Craigslist banned prostitution. At this point, I'm like, uh, yeah, that would suck to have to do that for a living. And the date went south from there. She starts accusing me of flirting with another girl at the bar, and then drops this one. You're trying to make that girl jealous. You like her, don't you? I'm confused at this point, and say that no. I'm having a nice date and have no interest in this other girl. She then says, look, if you're going to treat me like a worker, then pay me like one. I was so shocked, I started to deny that was what was going on, and she keeps demanding payment. I finally caught on that this was in fact a Craigslist worker using dating sites to ply her trade. I said, oh, fudge you, and left her there without a ride home. Story 27. Yes, I have. I didn't know it when I agreed to be set up with her, but she and her boyfriend had broken up about six weeks before we went out, on Valentine's Day, no less. She was an emotional, hysterical wreck from the start. She was fluctuating between periods of rage and abject sobbing without much time in between. I've never felt so bad for anyone as I did for her during the hour or so we were together. She was clearly not ready to be on a date, understatement of the year, maybe. So after 40 long minutes, I politely told her that the date was over and that I would be taking her home. Believe it or not, she's actually a friend of mine now. I wouldn't say we're terribly close, but we text fairly often. She did also text me a few days later to apologize and thank me for handling it as well as I did. Story 28, not technically a date, was solo at the bar on Easter night and started chatting with a solo lady next to me. She was cute and conversation starts out decent enough with some light flirting sprinkled in. Gradually get hints that she's the self-absorbed type who somehow always finds a way to steer the conversation back to herself. But think maybe she's just nervous and give her the benefit of the doubt. We are a few drinks deep and had moved seats to another part of the bar to sit closer. Religion comes up, again. She forgot we already talked about this. She's Christian, with good morals. I'm non-religious, but perhaps spiritual, and believe everyone is entitled to their own beliefs as long as they don't infringe on others. She seemed surprised, but okay with this the first time. The second time, however, stunned, wide-eyed, bad person mode engaged. You don't believe in God? On Easter, you say you don't believe in God, you piece of cow. You piece of cow. She then motions to pour her glass of water on my head, and I calmly somehow diffuse that. She continues, I can't believe I wasted my time with you. She has attracted the attention of the bartender and patrons. He doesn't believe in God. On Easter, I'm somehow able to covertly ask the bartender, check please, separated, swiftly pay, calmly say something like, I enjoyed talking to you. But you are being rude, and I'm leaving. Have a good night. And I calmly walked out as Miss Good Morals sat stunned that I left her. Story 29. Yep, got set up with a guy, total striped shirt, bro. I knew he wasn't my type, but figured what the fudge, let's try something new. He took me out to the standard date restaurant in my city, which is boring, but the food is good. Then all he could talk about is how amazing his alma mater, Ohio State, is and how much Michigan sucks. Miraculously, at some point, he asked about my family. I gave him a quick rundown and mentioned my female cousin was married with a couple kids. Asked what her husband did, and I said her wife stayed at home with their children, and he responded with, oh, she's a les? Was she sexually abused as a kid? I mean, that boy cow isn't normal, so that sucks you have to deal with it. Instead of arguing and questioning him, I just got my peach up and left. I didn't even say a word. The look on his face was incredulous. To this day, I can't hear or see anything about Ohio State University without thinking about that piece of cow. Story 30. So when I was in my undergrad years, I was studying pre-veterinary medicine. This meant a lot of the people in my major were science nerdy girls. I was a shy kid, but I always sat by this girl Nicole in my repro class, a class about pig dicks. Erotic, right? Nicole was quiet, very smart, and well, asterisk, she had it going on. Dark hair, petite, pale skin. Anyway, I go basically all semester not asking this girl out, and finally I get ballsy. And after class, I just asked her if she would want to get food with me later. And yeah, that worked. Shocked the cow out of me. I'm all stoked for this date, and I got us reservations at the local Italian restaurant. Nothing fancy, though. Everything is going well until she asks if I have any pets. I tell her about my blind kitten, Ray Charles, and she brings up candy. I had mentioned I smoked occasionally. She goes, aren't you worried it'll hurt Ray? I paused. Then I said, no, I, uh, asterisk, I asterisk, breathe the candy. What do you mean? 
she goes. Aren't you worried about the neurotoxins from the secondhand breathe hurting Ray? I was gonna correct her, but then I was like, huh, good point. Awk silence, asterisk strike one asterisk. A bit later, we're talking about our fave movies. I say mine is a tie between Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Jurassic Park. She says she's never seen JP. I asked why, and she straight up says because it's a stupid story and seemed kind of upset. And I said something like, uh, yeah, the plot is a bit weak, but the CGI, that was one of the first times people got a good idea of what dinosaurs were like. She's like, ha ha, yeah, like if they existed, I gotcha. And I was like, yeah, ha ha. Wait, did you say asterisk if asterisk they existed? Thinking in my head, fudge, she ov meant when you little unpleasant person. She's like, yeah, asterisk, if asterisk they existed. How do we know for sure? At this point, I couldn't tell if this girl was trolling me or what. I was just dumbfounded. I was like, uh, well, as you may know, we have like asterisk, a lot asterisk of dinosaur bones and fossils. She looks at me and scoffs while saying, scientists could have made those. Asterisk strike two asterisk. I tried to explain that no one would ever fund a project that's sole purpose is to just fathom species that never existed but she changed the subject. At this point, I've realized I made a mistake. This girl was as dumb as a box of rocks outside the classroom. Towards the end of the meal, we are bull and describing our parents. She says both of hers are devout Lutherans, etc. I say my mom is a tiny little Irish holy roller and my dad is a big fat Italian atheist, and I kind of joshed about opposites attracting. She made a sort of half-joke snide remark, which basically was, why did your sweet mom want to marry a stupid guy like your dad? To which I said, because he's a really great guy and he's really smart. While looking at her food, she chuckles and mutters, he must not be that smart. In my head, I was like, WTF, is this? Why am I even flipping here right now? Did she think that would be funny to me? I try to smooth it over with a joke and go, ha, you know you're much sweeter in class. She takes it literally and goes, why is that? And I say, BC, to be honest, I'm not getting a great first impression. She goes, Ah, well, you just a white boy. Asterisk strike three asterisk dropped a 20 on the table and walked out. Edit. Wow, gold. A big thank you. Shout out slash you slash winzip 115. My man. Also fix the soul soul typo. Story 31. Yep. Mid-twenties, met the guy. Mutual friend said he was nice and that I should go out with him. After dinner, which was awkward, no connecting, he said he wanted to go to his place and get whatever. I do not recall. So he has a roommate. Very creepy guy, around 40, balding, seedy, greasy t-shirt. About the only furniture was a disgusting couch, leaking foam rubber, stained. And a tripod with inversion boots to hang upside down in, which I was invited to use in pretty scary terms. I was not wearing pants, which they pointed out, too. I left in a big hurry and dropped the friends that thought this dude was okay. Story 32. I definitely have. I tried Tinder dating because I figured why not. It's shallow but at least you should know in advance whether there will be a physical attraction, right? Oh, I was so wrong. So I show up expecting to see a guy who I bonded with because we both compete in powerlifting and as such are in good physical shape, and he is 23 and I am 20. Nope! He had been using some fairly old pictures because one, he was fat. Two, he was at least 30 years old. I let it slide and think we can potentially still have a nice time having a drink and I just won't sign up for a second date. So we sit down and are in the middle of having a beer. Having a decent chat, I may add, when we start discussing how our luck has been on Tinder so far. I'm nearly done my beer when he says, Yeah, I figured to be successful, I'd have to lower my standards. That's why I matched with you. I was absolutely floored and had no idea how to respond. So I just excused myself to the bathroom, paid the waitress for my beer, and gave her a tip, and left. Story 33 Well, I'm not sure this counts, because I didn't leave. I just asterisk almost asterisk did. I thought he was super creepy and super insane on our first date, mainly because he showed me pics of a disembodied boob on his phone that he had biopsied for cancer. He's not a serial killer, just a DR, and gave me a long, meandering, weird lecture about the importance of doing self-ball exams so as not to end up like said disembodied boob. I texted my BFF immediately after all, I have the best story. I went on a date with a guy who showed me a boob on a table all bloody, and then he lectured me about ball, but he was all muscly and I really wanted to see what his arms felt like. And then we had this great conversation over text. So we went on a second date and he was like, I can't believe you went out with me again. I was just nervous and you asked about my job and I wayward vomited.
Anyway, I tell that story all the time now. His family thought it was hysterical at Thanksgiving. His mom laughed so hard she cried actual tears. So now we have a really great first date story. And he sends us all, my family and his, the occasional cautionary email. Look at this lung. Don't breathe, all of you. Check out this leg bone. That white part is cancer, and it has replaced the whole bone. Go straight to the DR when you have pain. At first, my brother and sister were like, Mmm, GTF, can we opt out of this list survey? But it grew on them, and now they find it hilarious. I don't even know, you guys. I find it really endearing now. We're getting married this summer. Story 34. I asked a girl out to the hookah lounge I used to work at once. First thing that bugged me was that she texted nonstop from the beginning onward. On top of that, she would hog the hose, even when she wasn't smoking it much. My breaking point, though, was when she casually mentioned that she'd done meth a few times and thought it was fun. No flipping thank you, even if you asterisk are asterisk hot, until the meth catches up anyways. Luckily for me, a friend of mine showed up, and after I ducked to the bathroom to text him, we began Operation Super Third Wheel, and he sat down with us, took all of the focus on conversation to himself, and eventually I ended up just leaving with him to go to a different lounge. Thank you, Homer. You're my lifesaver, buddy. Story 35. Met a woman through OK Cupid. We traded a few messages, moved to texting, and then talked over the phone. She asterisk seemed asterisk pretty normal. Fast forward to the first actual meetup, and it's going well, but something seems a bit off. She's asking me all kinds of questions about income, job, what my rent costs, etc. I dodge most of them by changing the subject or give vague answers. She straight up tells me that she's ovulating and wants me to impregnate her. I mean, under different circumstances, I definitely would have, but I hardly know her. She started talking about how many kids she wanted to have, how I'm so perfect, and so on. This was a small town that I worked in for a year because work transfer and career advancement. I excused myself to go to the bathroom, flagged the server down, and paid the bill, said, this date is going down like a Russian plane in a snowstorm, and tried sneaking out. She saw me as I was making a fast walk to the door and leaped up from her chair and started running. I was running to my car like one of those scenes in a horror movie, complete with fumbling with the key fob to asterisk remotely asterisk unlock the car. Hopped in, started up, and got out of there. I heard her yelling for me to come back because we were going to have a family and make lots of babies. Blocked her on OK Cupid and blocked her number on Google Voice. Thank God for Google Voice. Story 36. She saw no problem as she talked about her cats on our first date. In leaning slightly to her left, as if to just shift weight off one hip to the other, and let forth a boisterous booty belch in the process. She never acknowledged it. And she never skipped a beat in her story about how her cats were using her various plants for the litter box. The table behind her got the full effect of her exhaust as they questioned each other as to who did it. How they didn't hear this sound emanate from women behind them, I'll never know. Both the butt trumpeting and the feline fecal Easter egg story did well for my appetite. When I excused myself to the restroom after dinner, she did the same. I walked in the restroom, counted to twenty, went and quickly paid my bill, and left. When I got to the car, I called her bother, had him come get her, told him she was ill. When I was two miles up the road, she called me. The only thing she said after I said hello was, it was the fart, wasn't it? I said yes. She hung up the phone, and I've not spoken to her since. Story 37. I kind of felt bad for this one, but here it goes. This was many years ago when I was still in high school. I started talking to this girl online. She was a friend of a friend of a friend. This was pre-Facebook, and even before most people had a MySpace, so I had no idea what she looked like, but agreed to go on a blind date and see a movie. She insisted on seeing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I personally really don't like horror films, and slasher flicks are the worst of the worst in my book. I tried to suggest seeing pretty much anything else, but she wouldn't do it. I was still in high school, so I just said okay. She was a girl after all, and I was a desperate high school boy. So I show up for our date. We agreed to meet early so we could talk some and get to know each other before the movie started. She shows up and she brought a friend without mentioning that to me. It was cool since it was a blind date. Can't be too careful after all, but she decided she was also coming to the movies with us and third wheeling it up. The girl is really, really not my type, but I didn't want to be superficial, so I figure let's talk and maybe our personalities will mesh. Nope, absolutely nothing in common. After half an hour or so of awkward conversation, we decide to go sit in the movies. I'm sitting there and only five minutes in, I'm miserable. The movie barely started and I already hate everything about it. I start thinking to myself, why am I torturing myself to be polite to a girl who I'm never going to speak to again? 
Her and her friend are the ones that really wanted to see this, not me, so I decided they can watch it together. I lean in and say, I'm not feeling well, dip out, got the movie theater to give me a refund, and went and bought a burrito. The burrito was wonderful, and I had way more fun with it. Story 38. Late to the party, but haven't read a story like mine yet, so here it goes. I went to a rural high school where it was impossible to date anyone, so it was pretty common to go to school dances in other districts. My buddy was going to one and needed some moral support, so I agreed to a blind date to keep him company. We did the whole noisy teenage group at the steak and shake thing, and we were all having a great time. I'm flirting, she's flirting, we enjoy the same music, and she even has an N64. The dance was fun, and there was some talk of hitting a some kind of bonfire afterward, so teenage me has basically hit the jackpot. Then I hear an announcement from the DJ that someone's in the lobby to talk to me. My father had a horrible three-wheeler accident and was fighting for his life, so that was a shock. I turned from the charming blind date into a blubbering mess in front of an entire school of people that don't know me. Buddy drives me to the hospital. Neither of us hear from them again. Don't worry, though. Dad was fine after some short-term amnesia. That wasn't the first or last time he almost kicked the bucket. He's a wily little guy.